Bahaya Rafe, it is said that human beings are both physical and spiritual. Physically, we don't have free will. We are bound to the laws of existence, which is what science says. Beautiful, makes perfect sense that I cannot suddenly grow wings out of my choice. So I simply don't have choice to alter my physicality. I cannot move mountains. I cannot uproot trees. I can only do certain things that I am already predestined to do. As a physical creature, as a mechanism, but as a spiritual being, I can exercise my choice fully. I can choose to do or not to do. In fact, that is the biggest thing. While science says you are a mechanism, you are born to do this, you are born to reproduce, you are born to eat, you are born to grow. I can choose not to do any of that. In this moment, at this very moment, I can go to a place inside me where there is no science, there is no religion, nothing. There is just pure choosing. I am choosing to just be. The ultimate choice to say, I am not a machine and I am not a product of a creator. If I can choose in entirety what I want to do this moment, then I'm throwing the idea of a creator out. And I'm also throwing the idea of pure mechanics. The answer is right at the center. I am the answer. Because the phenomenon called me is very different from both the scientific explanation of things, things and religious explanation of things. There is a mystery that I can only solve experientially. If I truly want to answer the question of who am I? I have to understand free will. I have to understand choice. I have to start from that place where choosing is possible. But there is no space for free will in two of our most popular streams of thought. Science says surrender to the laws. Religion says surrender to this mysterious creator. There is no emphasis on the most important thing that is you. At the center of your own life, of your own being, everything merges. A place from where you can choose to be something more than a mechanism or simply be a part of the mechanics of life. And what is that choosing? It is the exercising of consciousness. It is because there is a possibility for you to choose to be conscious. I want to be conscious of my choices. I want to be conscious of this mechanism called life. I want to be conscious of everything I'm doing. Free will exists. But this is something you have to be introduced to. You cannot find it by yourself because it is such an integral part of your being. Unless you have made a conscious choice to connect with this part of you, you will simply use it in a very mechanical way. People wake up in the morning, they go through a certain routine and they go back to bed. Now, if you ask the question, how much of what they have been doing is a part of their free will and how much of it is a part of their social, religious, environmental conditioning, you will see the difference between a choosing conscious individual and someone who is simply lost in the movement of life. Most people, most of us simply go through life as 
if it is predetermined for us, we wake up to do those things that our mind has already pre-programmed us. We become aware of this mechanism once in a while, but throughout the day, we are acting under its influence. That is why you can pick any individual, leave out a Buddha, any other individual, and you can plot the course of their life. If you understand their mind, what they are thinking about, which is not an impossibility. If you were to simply know everything that is happening within this mechanism, you can plot its course. Of course, it is not enough to only understand this one mechanism. You also have to understand its environment fully. You have to understand every tree limb. You have to understand everything that is happening everywhere because it's all a part of the same continuity. A branch can fall on him and it can kill him. Now, if you had not taken that into consideration, you cannot plot the course of his future. But if you were to take everything in its totality, it's going to be an extraordinarily complex mathematical endeavor, but it can be done. If you can do it, you can exactly say what's going to happen to this individual precisely because all the elements are available. You know what's there in his house. You know who he speaks to. You know what's happening in the world. You know every moment how things are unfolding. But why are we unable to do this? Because in our world, there are a few individuals who cannot be plotted on a graph because they know how to choose. This is not ordinary choosing of action. It is to choose to not be a part of any of this. It is an awakened mind that determines its own course. Physically, it is bound to the same laws, but intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, it is in a completely different dimension. Now, if you remove all the teachings of awakened beings, enlightened masters, you can pick an individual and you can plot his future on a graph paper and it will be 100% precise. The only reason we cannot do it now because these teachings are there. These words are there and these words are the first and the most important sprinkling of free will because it is coming from a space of freedom. Only an awakened mind can introduce you to free will. That is why the emphasis of Buddha, know yourself. Same message of Jesus, same message of Krishna. What are they talking about? They are talking about free will. You are absolutely free. You can even transcend the so-called physical laws of life. You cannot change it, but you can choose to stay above it. That is what happens in the moment of awakening, in the moment of enlightenment. You have freed yourself even from the laws of physics. There is a place where there is no gravity, there is no light, there is no space, there is no matter, there is no energy. There is something else entirely, which neither science sees nor religion sees. If you removed all awakened teachings, then science can explain everything. The reason why science cannot explain everything is because these people have happened, these individuals have happened, who completely defy all our basic physical laws. Why 
should an individual choose to sit quiet? It cannot be explained. Buddha's life is a total mystery to science. Before his meditation, his life is so easy to explain. He was born in a rich family. He was given all the luxuries, all the comfort. It's all understandable. The discomfort is understandable. The pain is understandable because it's a part of the mechanics of life. But to choose to step away from all this and go on an inward journey and to experience a moment of total freedom, absolute freedom from the mind, from the body is beyond science and beyond religion to explain. There is an example of free will. Because you are free, you can choose. But it is a choice that you have to exercise. Only when you exercise your choice to be free, you can find some meaning in what you're doing. It is free will that makes life meaningful, purposeful, something that you can actually experience, enjoy and be involved with. Why most people don't have this deep connection with life? Why haven't they found a place where they can call their own in the world is because they are not exercising their choice to be free. Now, Viktor Frankl went through six, uh, four concentration camps. He survived all four concentration camps. And he came up with a theory of explaining purpose, explaining meaning. He called it logotherapy. He said, while I was in the concentration camps, the most important distinction between individuals who wanted to survive, who wanted to get out of there, and those who had given up hope was meaning. These individuals who had not given up hope had somehow figured out a way to generate meaning out of what they were doing. The most mundane, the simplest of things, sometimes the most dehumanizing of things that you're doing in the concentration camps where you can find no meaning, no purpose, a few individuals were able to create their own purpose by bringing their choice to see some meaning, some purpose in what was happening. And it is these individuals who had a better chance of getting out because constantly they were figuring out ways to add to this meaning. And the only way you can add to this meaning is by becoming more and more free. So the quest to freedom, what's the difference between a concentration camp and you know, walking in a park? It's freedom. In a concentration camp, you just don't have any freedom. So much so that you don't have even freedom to choose how long you wanna live. You're just waiting for someone to determine everything about your life. But if you can find meaning, even in a place like that, you will find hope. And this cannot come from outside. This has to come from within. So he called this theory logotherapy, where what we are searching for is not power, as Nietzsche said. It's not dominance, it's not control, it is meaning. If we find meaning, 
then life is beautiful. If we don't find the meaning, then it does not matter how many things you have, how many things that are going right, nothing matters because there is no meaning, there is no purpose, there is no exercise of choice, exercise of free will, your life is utterly meaningless. It starts by understanding what is it to choose? What is the actual meaning of choosing? Is it to choose between two actions, two thoughts, or is it to choose between action and non-action, between thinking and non-thinking, between doing and not doing? This is the difference. If you can exercise your choice to not do, to not think, to not mechanically fall into the same grooves of the mind, you are choosing to free yourself fully. That is the starting point. From where slowly you become more and more of yourself. 